going today. Today I'm going to be talking about oil painting and particularly other primer oil painting, which means down in one go. So earlier today I painted this horse picture. It took me about three to four hours to do, which is quite quick for an oil painting. So in the tutorial I'm going to be talking about brush strokes and design and the type of paints that I use and things like that. So before I progress, just um, if you'd like to uh, subscribe to the channel, then just press the button and the little bell thing and then as my new videos come along, you'll be able to get them. There's lots to look at already on the, on the channel. Um, watercolour painting, acrylics, pen and ink, basic drawing, things like that. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to doing this painting today. I love horses and it um, should be a lot of fun. Now the method I'm using to draw in on this canvas is in um, one of my earlier films. I think it's episode one or two. It's how to draw on your canvas. Um, it was quite a, quite a complex workshop so I hope you enjoy that. Um, so I'm, I'm working in charcoal to draw my design. Charcoal is very forgiving in that um, on this surface you can just quite easily just wipe it off and keep going and going until you're till you're happy with the design it works really well so if you're working out in the bush or something like that you can take your canvas and your charcoal and sometimes you can paint no sorry not paint but you can draw for up to two hours and um, keep mucking around until you get everything right especially if you're drawing a building you, you know it can literally take you an hour to um, to get all the perspective done properly and as I say charcoal is marvellous so it's willow charcoal it's it's not the charcoal that you use in pencil you know like a pencil form <clears throat> so on the right hand side there I've just popped into the into the frame is a painting which I done uh, quite a few few years ago it's a different type of painting than what I'm talking about today that's a painting done with lots of layers or or of glazes it's um it's in a museum actually at um, Morton Bay, but anyway, that's besides the point. Um, so that particular painting took me a month to do and had about 12 glazes. Whereas the painting I'm working on today um, is only going to take me about th three or four hours to do. Throughout this um, workshop tutorial today, I'll be talking about the different types of oil paints and the different methods used. I, I hope you find it of interest. Um, this is really, I suppose, for, for beginners. Um, if you've been painting a while, you'll, you'll probably know all the stuff anyway. So now I've gone in with my charcoal, I'm now using a um, tissue to dab off all the excess charcoal. So which is leaving behind now just the trace of the, if you like, good design. So um, once I've done that and I'm happy, I'm now going to be going over this, this rough design by using uh, a paintbrush and I'm going to be using um, a medium called Liquin. Now Liquin is a, what we call a fast drying medium. Um, so I'll be using a little bit of raw umber paint. That's my Liquin, that's my brush and that's my little pot. So just roughing in with the raw umber and Liquin. Now this will dry in about 15 minutes which is really, really quickly. If I was just putting the oil paint straight onto canvas, it could take a couple of days to dry or even longer. So it's amazing stuff. If you're living in another country, you know, you may have liquid or you may have um, a similar sort of fast drying medium, but it'll, I'm sure it will do a similar type of job. The beauty of this is, is that once this design is dry, it means that when I actually start the oil painting using lots of colour, if I make a mistake and I need to wipe the whole lot off, then left underneath will be this design which I'm doing now, which is great. So working away quite quickly here. It's usually at this stage of the painting where I'm beginning to think what colours am I going to use and stuff like that. So um, my mind's sort of wandering away a little bit. If I make a bit of a mistake now with this raw umber, um, I used a little cotton bud then, with, dipped in a bit of medium to wipe off the mistake. 
just popped into the screen now on the left hand side um, is um, a painting, an Alla Prima painting. It's about, oh, I don't know, maybe six foot long. It's two paintings, a diptych, um, oil painting that was a lot of fun. Now I don't usually use a palette in my Alla Prima paintings. I, I um, sort of put the paint straight from the tube onto the canvas. So, so far I've put down um, turquoise, titanium white and cadmium red. Coming in now with a bit of Windsor Violet and Titanium White. We used to have an art school for 20 years. It was called Artists Out and About Australia. And, and, I, and you know, that went very well and I enjoyed it. And I, and I miss teaching now. But um, I used to say to my students that um, I reckon that you use about a teaspoon of oil paint to every five square centimetres. So that's a lot of paint when you're working in Ala Primer. And the reason why I used to say this was because, well, I like, my, I like to think that my paintings are still going to be around in 50 years time. And if you put your paint on too thin, it sort of, if you like, wears off a little bit over time. The painting needs to be cleaned every two years or so. And if it's only put on in trace amounts, 20 years down the track, there won't be much left of your painting. So as I say, lots of painting. Lots of paint, sorry. Of course, when we come to do glazing painting, that's a different method and we can do 20 layers of, of glazes if you like. And then finished off with varnish. So I'm starting on the horse now and I'm putting in Windsor Orange I'm using a little bit of liquid with this. I'm putting on it a little bit thinner than I have been with the other paint because I intend to go over it with other colours a fair bit. Just putting in a little bit of burnt sienna now. A little bit of yellow ochre. Love Clydesdale horses, they're great aren't they? I used to come from in England, we used to have a lot of Shire horses. In Australia we don't have as many Shire horses, we have a lot more Clydesdales. My friend um, Beryl, she has a um, Shire horse mare though, oh sorry, Shire horse stallion here in Blackburn. And a Clydesdale as well. This Clydesdale is called Mo. Remember as a child I used to ride Clydesdales and a lot of fun, hey? Huge, great horses when you're so tiny. Not that I was rich or anything like that and lived you know, on a farm or used to, nothing like that, but um, the local farm used to let us hop on and take us for a ride sometime and lead us. It was, it was great fun. Now I'm using a little um, sort of cotton bud to remove some mistakes. Popped in on the screen on the right hand side now is a large painting. It's about two meters wide in reality. It's called Picnic Races. You probably can't see here but in the background are lots of um, horses on a picnic day, picnic race days which were quite popular in the earlier days in Australia and there's the vintage cars in the foreground. We still have picnic races now but um, I think they were more frequent then. Just beginning to put a little bit of um, a bit of work on the legs and on the face. See how I'm using my paintbrush horizontally sometimes. In one of my other one of my other workshops, I really show you in detail how to do the brush works and the brush strokes. Um, this isn't really what this film is about today. Today. It's more about 
you know, putting paint onto canvas straight from the tube and um, not getting too hung up on detail and um, just using the one brush. Incidentally, I never use terps throughout the entire painting. I just wipe the same brush onto a tissue and go from one colour to the next. I also work in the gallery with the door open so I have fresh air coming in and try and keep it as healthy environment as I can. I only wash my, or say clean my paint brushes once at the end of the day. I'm using a number one sable watercolour brush now, putting in a little bit of detail. There's lots of rules with oil painting and I just choose to break all of them really. Um, some people say, oh you can't use a fiddly little brush on a a la primer oil painting, just a nice big brush and slap it all on. Well, I just say, well who's making the rules? Let's just have fun. Let's just turn out a painting. If somebody buys it and they likes it, like it well that's that's good as um, long as I enjoy myself while I'm painting that that's the main thing it's very relaxing too sort of zone out and go into a different different world if you like coming in with a bit of Windsor violet now making a contrast between the if you like orangey color of the bay horse um, with a dark background I want the horse to Come forward more in the painting and as it progresses you'll, you'll see the way in which I do this. Incidentally I usually um, do the sides, you know, the side of the canvas at the same time as I'm going. Um, so while I've got the paint on my brush um, all mixed up in exactly the right colour, I'll work on the edges as well. It saves going around later on after the painting's finished and trying to remix the colour. We're in severe drought here at the moment. I live in a region called Black Butt, which is in the south area of southeast Queensland, and um, well, we haven't seen any rain for three months, and uh, everywhere is really sort of dried up and horrible. So I'm just going down with yellow ochre now and some white and just adding a, a tiny little smidge of um, turquoise to add just a sort of a, a suggestion of possibly there was some green there once upon a time. On the right hand side now I've just had a painting come into view, that's one of my favourite paintings, with Mo again, the Clydesdale walking down the road locally to us. My little Jim Agatha dogs. I've written the Jim Agatha series um, it's historical fiction novels for all ages and the little Jim Agatha dogs they each have a map of Australia on them. That particular painting on the right um, is what I call a glazing painting and would have taken me about a month to do as opposed to the quick method which I'm now doing today. And with a glazing workshop with oils, I discuss the different use of medium using linseed oil and terps and the different ratios that you use with the different layers that you do. Sometimes between coats, I have to wait a week for it to dry. Some of the masters used to do up to 500 coats, I'm led to believe. So I'm just now putting in a little bit of um, cadmium red. We have red soil here in Blackbutt where I live. You might want to look at my colour theory uh, course if you're just starting out with painting. I, uh, it's a sort of a seven hour workshop broken down in into maybe six or seven lessons and there I discuss one how to create a color wheel 
and more importantly too, how to use it. It's a really fun workshop. You get the opportunity to um, paint lots and lots of, um, if you like, colour swatches and, and you can work out for yourself with the method um, what will make a good painting before you start with regard to the use of colour. When I first started painting, God knows how many years ago now, sky was blue, grass was green, <coughs> um, trees had green leaves on them and shadows under things were a blacky yucky colour. Um, now, you know, sort of 50 years down the track, I've discovered a whole new world and I love my paintings to pop and there's all these unusual colours and in the Colour Theory Workshop, I'll share with you the method which I use. Just putting in a little bit of cadmium red in the sky there, giving it a bit of a pink idea. Late in the afternoon we get this sort of pink sky that comes across. Incidentally, at the start of a painting, it's a really good idea to decide where your light is coming from. So I never um, have the light source from above, meaning like midday. For me that would make a boring painting. So this painting, the light is coming from the left hand side indicating maybe either an early morning or a sunset. This can make everything more three-dimensional. I'm roughing in now, putting in plenty of yellow ochre paint. Just popped up there on the right-hand side, there's a painting there of three horses drawing a wagon. That's a painting from one of my Jin Agatha books. In each book there's 60 paintings, 30 oil paintings and 30 watercolours. When I'm at the gallery I like to work in oils as much as I can because when you get people coming into the gallery you can stop and talk to them and talk with them and um, not worry about the painting drying. Whereas if you're working in acrylics, as you would know probably, you know, it dries very quickly and you can't blend. So um, that's why I favour oil. All the paintings from my books were painted at this gallery. I'm having fun in the corner of the painting now. Very relaxing. I still haven't used a palette yet today. I'm just <coughs> squeezing the paint. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just squeezing the paint onto the paintbrush. Um, I think if I was to work on a palette, I just wouldn't be able to pick up enough paint. I just have it in my mind all the time. This painting needs to last for a long time. Let's just slap the paint on them. Let's just have some fun here. That's a bit of Windsor Orange going in, both in the water. And I'm going to do some dried up weeds in the foreground. Putting the orange in the foreground so it sort of marries in and ties in with the same orange on the horse at, at the back makes the painting work better. Just roughing in the person a little bit. Okay, now I'm putting in the little dog.
always like to include a little dog in my painting if I can. Um, often I hide a lot of things in the painting, um, like dragons and elephants and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. light there on the rocks. Just come into view there on the right hand side. A painting for my books, it's depicting the Anzacs returning from war in the early 1900s. That's an Ala Primer painting down in one go. Now I'm going to put the people in. I've decided to put myself and my sister riding this horse. So I'm using a cotton bud, you know, the thing you clean your ears with, dipped in um, liquid and I'm taking off some of the paint that I'm, you know, where I wish to put new colour. Um, so that's something that's easily done. I'm just putting an outline of the people using just a little bit of raw umber. If you notice on the bottom left hand side of the painting, I've already signed it, you see signature Janet Skinner. Um, I find that if I sign my paintings at the end, it can sometimes unbalance the picture. So I usually sign the painting sort of halfway through. Sometimes people come into the gallery and say, why are you still working on that painting? It's signed, you finished it, haven't you? And I, and I try and explain to them, but I don't think a lot of people don't necessarily get it anyway, but, but that's what I do. So I'm rubbing out now with a cotton bud with a bit more liquid, um, some of the paint, because it can get muddy if you start putting colours on top. Like mix, if I mixed purple with orange, it makes like a, a muddy colour, which is good sometimes, but not in this particular instance. Now I'm starting to use my palette for the first time today. So sometimes when I need um, small amounts of paint and mixed up the right colour, then I'll use the palette, but not usually till the end of the painting. It's funny when you paint and you stand back and you look for a minute, then you'll see something you don't like and you fix it up like underneath that horse just now. Now I'm going back to work on the faces and um, you know roughing in a bit of a light and where the light's falling on the people. This is a great way of painting because you can just put your brush in one area of a painting and pick up another colour and then transfer it onto what you're working on. So um, great fun. My watercolour um, workshops are good too. There's, there's six um, episodes in watercolour, right from choosing your, your watercolour paper, um, how to stretch watercolour paper, the types of brushes you use, there's very basic, so there's, there's an advanced watercolour um, workshop that I do as well. Um, the same with pen and ink. Um, I also teach you how to make all your own ink pens. I don't actually, um, never bought an ink pen, so that can be um, you know, a great way to go, um, making your own pens, a lot of fun. Sometimes it's nice to do pen and ink as well. So on the right hand side now, um, there's a, a horse called Snow. It's actually a pastel painting. Um, you may not be able to tell from this distance, it could look quite easy like an oil painting. Um, pastel workshop is really good too. I discuss the different types of pastels, the round pastels, the square pastels, the different uh, surfaces that you can work on, the different types of paper. I also discuss how you can um, create your own surface using acrylic paint mixed with sand, um, which makes a really good tooth for um, doing acrylic, uh, sorry, for doing 
um, pastel work. Pastel paper is very good. I mean, it comes up to a certain size. I think it's 75 centimetres by 55. But if, if you want to do a pastel work that's, say, you know, a metre and a half long, you're not going to find a piece of paper that big that quickly. So um, I discussed then, on, you know, how to prepare your... Um, how to prepare your surface and that with your own paint with sand so that's so that's really good just putting in a few highlights now on the Clydesdale by putting a bit of white paint behind the mane it's making the mane come forward uh, making the horse stand out a little bit putting a bit of white on his rump Makes you want to go horse riding, doesn't it? So for my shadows, I'm just putting in a little bit of. Um, oh, there's a customer just come in the gallery now. Hopefully, yeah, she, she's gone away. That's fine. Um, so um, yeah, for the, see the shadow underneath the horse, I'm using turquoise. So to make the people stand out, I'm adding a bit of light behind the little girl. It's bringing her forward. So I'm just taking out a little area now with a cotton bud with a little bit of um, liquid on it and that will make, you know, I'll be able to apply some fresh colour on top of that. So I'm just using a bit of lamp black. These are going to be rocks. And a little bit of white for where the light's catching on the light side. As I say, it really gives it um, dimension when you you know you have light coming from one side whereas if you were to do an overhead light it would be boring everything would be lit in the same a little bit of reflection in the water there of the horse a few highlights In my drawing workshop, I teach on how, you know, how to um, draw a horse from life in my paddock. It's quite fun. Um, you know, I talk about shapes and things. I, um, and I also teach the method on, you know, how you can sort of in, improve your drawing very quickly. It just popped into the right hand side now. The top is Black Butt Bakery. Wow, do I love Black Butt Bakery. It's right next door to my gallery. Aren't I lucky? It's fantastic. And in the foreground, you can tell I'm very proud, can't you, is my grandson. He's pushing the wheelbarrow with the bread in it. Now, obviously, it's make-believe. It's sort of supposed to be a painting back from the, you know, in the early 1900s um, from when the bakery was first there. But, gee, yeah, it's good. And the, and the horses on the left, that's Noddy and Cindy, the horses I used to ride when I was a child. They were what we call drum horses. They, you know, heavy horse cross like a finer horse. Wow, do you like Black Buck Bakery? Anyway, back to my painting now. I'm beginning to put in um, a few final brush strokes, just touching up here and there. It's um, sort of knowing when to stop. Man looks like, oh, sorry, the person looks like he's been given, she's been given a black eye. Fix that bit up. It's a nice area living out here at Black Bar. It's a fantastic climate. We have lovely cold winters where we um, have a log fire on every day. So that's really nice. That's a bit like England. And then in the summer, it's, it's not as hot as what it is down on the Gold Coast or in Brisbane on the Sunshine Coast. So, you know, it really suits me well. Well, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I've turned that spotlight off so you can see a little bit better now. No reflection on the canvas, and as I say, knowing when to stop. 
and it's so easy to ruin a painting by overdoing it. And there we go, just putting in a little bit of fall off of his mane. Gee, I want to go for a shiny. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. Hi guys, it's Mitch here. Hope you enjoyed that video. To see the next one, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell next to it.